Dovin and welcome to a BSP preview video. Now today we're looking forward from a week's time now we are going racing officially for the first time for 2024 with BSP. Now 2023 was a pretty wild and epic uh, adventure for the whole of BSP and looking into 2024 it could be more of the same and hopefully for us viewers and even for the riders it's going to be another crazy season but today's video is just a quick little preview as we cast our minds forward to Navarro which is round one. Now obviously big talking points Tommy Bridewell champion last year has jumped kicked or walked whatever way you want to say from PBM. PBM have gone down to one rider this year just Glenn and um, funnily enough Bridewell has gone from being Glenn Armand's teammate to going to the factory Honda team to being Andrew Armand's teammate. Now, uh, all new Honda for Bridewell. Um, he seems very positive about it. I'm a bit skeptical whether he can challenge again. No, no question of his level of skill or determination to back it up. Just that Honda. Uh, Honda over the last probably five, ten years in pretty much all classes in two wheel racing, especially in the in the higher class, you just you just don't fill your confidence. So. Uh, again, positive news coming out there from Dean Harrison as well, who's also made the switch from Dow Kawasaki over to Honda Racing, which is going to be a really interesting switch for the roads. But today, just focusing on BSB, I'm just not too sure how the Honda will get on. Again, all they're saying is that it's pretty good and that uh, it's all more of the same in terms of pretty promising. Uh, in the OMG Racing team, uh, that's pretty much the same. We still have Kyle Wright and Vickers, so two riders who had very strong seasons last year, two very improved riders. So I'd imagine the R1s. We'll be at the front again with the number 7 and 77 respectively on the front. New livery this year. So it's a, it's a pretty interesting prospect for them because you just feel the Yamaha lacks a small bit. But in some tracks it is the bike to be on for example Thruxton. So it'll be an interesting uh, season for them to see if they can go a bit better this year. And maybe, I know obviously they went into the, well Kyle Ryder went into the last race of the season with an outside, a real outside chance of beating both Glenn and Tommy but wasn't able to do it but you just feel the Yamaha is very good but it just lacks what a BMW can do to it on the straight it just can't pass it's just the conundrum they have in pretty much every every category these days Yamaha just doesn't able to get ahead of it if it has clear track it's pretty good but unfortunately in uh, for the example Alton Park Brands Hatch you don't really have many Races where you get clear track open road, you have to really battle and scrap it out in BSB. Not a really interesting one, and probably a downgrade, unfortunately. Jason O'Halloran going in and replacing Lee Bob Jackson on the FS3 Kawasaki. Now, does that extend? Looks like it's maybe made a small step in Superbikes, World Superbikes, that being. Um, does that extend? Just looks like it's a step behind, has been for a couple of years now in. Uh, BSB. Unfortunately, Halloran jumps onto it. Probably not a great time for him and his career to be trying to maybe get himself towards that el elusive title. Um, I'd be very surprised if he can do it on this Kawasaki. Of course, nobody is questioning his talent. It's just, for me, the big issue is just that, that equipment he has and just overall, really, the competitiveness because you just think that Kawasaki last year in the hands of Lee Bob and Max Cook were there a couple of rounds, but for most part of the season, they were just struggling to be top 10. So uh, it's going to be a tough one for Haaland because, again, he's a front runner and he's just you feel like he's just a bit of a backward step with the, the McCann team kind of finishing up and being kind of merged with the um, Marcher and Yamaha team that Jack Kennedy left. And now we also move on to someone who's a bit of a, an outside shot last year. He was on the Honda's old team. Um, Danny Kent, that is, is now on the BMW Cam's Martrain Racing Yamaha. It's going to be an interesting one because, again, I just... I look at Danny Kent as he is a world champion. No question of his talent, his skill, his ability. But what can he do on, on over full season? Because, obviously, they pulled out last year, kind of halfway through. And he was really good when he was there. Um, but it was just whether, as in kind of a, a pull-together team, could they be good enough to go up against the might of PBM or McCann's Yamaha? And they showed they could on their day fight. Now he's in a much more kind of established team, you'd imagine. He will be able to do something a bit better. And again, on an R1, that's probably one of the bikes you want to be on in this championship. Maybe the... BMW or the Ducati are probably the only two bikes that you would probably say that have an edge over the M, like the R1, um, M1, R1, they're pretty much the same these days, <laughs> they still can't pass. Um, talking about the Ducati, of course the main the main Ducati man will be Glenn, and he, for most people, and to be honest, is my championship favourite coming in, lost the championship last year, very, 
very easily could have went his way. He could be a world champ or BSB champion now this year and going back to defend his title. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to do it, but you'd imagine with that V4, um, I was listening to a few interviews he had during the Dynton test, so it was positive. So he looks up for a fight, and again, he's getting into a real purple patch of his career that you'd imagine he could easily kind of maybe knock out a couple of championships here over the next two or three years if things go his way and Ducati kind of keep up the, the level in BSB. But it's, a, it's definitely going to be an interesting season because BSB is one of those championships where it's not always the same guys winning. Like I mentioned, we had, uh, for example, the Thruxton where both the ZX10s and the Yamahas were there. The Ducatis were like 14, 15, 16 with Aiden, Bar um, um, Bridewell and Erwin. So it was just a... It shows that in BSB, a lot can change. It's very different to the, the World Series where... It's very un it's like modern day motor GP or world superbikes. It's not really attractive. You turn up and a bike just doesn't work. Whereas in BSB, it still happens because we go to these very quirky British tracks. But it's uh, it's really setting up to be a nice, interesting season. Again, BSB, some of the best racing out there. And if you are a bit suspect and not a massive BSB fan, if you turn in and out the odd race, like I do, used to do anyway for probably three or four years, I used to catch the odd race here and there when I was on. But now I'm heavily hooked and watch. Watch it as best I can in terms of a, like a religious near nearly at the moment where I watch it with GP and World Superbikes. Uh, it takes up a lot of my time, but it's really, really worth it. But again, if you are getting into it for the first time this year, I'd really, really recommend tuning in. I, mean, I don't know how Navarro will play out. Again, but it being a Spanish track, it might be a bit different. It might have a bit more of a World Superbike feel. I might be wrong on that, but I know for a fact when we get into Brands Hatch, Olton, for example, Cadwell, We'll get our, our typical BSV madness for the, the season. But um, there's a couple of races there I mentioned just really having interesting moves, interesting seasons ahead of them. But uh, just let me know in the comments yourselves what you think yourselves. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much going to end it there just because just a quick preview, just my kind of thoughts on how a couple of people go and uh, coming up in the 2024 BSB season. But I'm really, really looking forward to knowing does a there's a lot riding on this season for a lot of people and a lot of people as well that I, I was wondering right, actually I forgot I've just seen his name on screen poor Rory Skinner completely forgot to mention he's back on the Cheshire Moulding BMW um, he's a rider that could end up like a modern day shaky burn where he just never gets the opportunity in World Superbikes and kind of jumps up and down between Moto2 and, and that kind of thing and he just I feel he had a contract for t this year in Moto2 but it kind of was pulled out from underneath him um, as is with a lot of modern day racing it's, it's a bit just a bit unfortunate um, I'm, I wish Dorna maybe had given him again to keep the British rider in the, in the championship would have been nice when losing Sam um, obviously in Moto3 does Josh Watley and Ogden not really pulling threes up to two of them I don't see them being there for the next couple of years um, I, I think to be honest Yemlav kind of academy I think he's waiting on people to kind of hit age to get into the class so it's going to be an interesting one for Skinner because I feel like he's too good to be in BSB and that's no disrespect to the class I just think he's a world level rider he just hasn't had the opportunity uh, obviously he was on the FS3 Kawasaki about three four years ago now and uh, he was he was quite good and he really had a that was back when they went back to the green white and blue that beautiful livery that they currently have and um, it was really good to see him in the class but um, overall I just feel like he's probably too good for this class and I hope that even if he goes and wins the championship this year, I'd like to see him maybe on a BMW in World. Um, but it's just a bit of a log jam really at the moment in, in nearly all categories trying to get young, improved, uh, talented riders in regardless of their nationality. There's just so many riders going for so many little seats that it's going to be pretty difficult. But I think that is where we will leave it. I've touched upon pretty much everyone that I wanted to touch upon. And yeah, let me know in the comments yourselves if there's anyone you think that I should be giving a bit more focus on. Anyone that should be uh, are watching out for this year and yeah obviously as well I didn't even mention the likes of Haslam or Christian Idis and Idin even you know, Idis, Idin and uh, Nesbitt again who had a good season last year and Lee Bob on um, Fireblade this year as well so there's a lot of writers that didn't even touch on so let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and thank you all for tuning in today's video let's go racing one week to go can't wait thanks for watching see you in the next one bye bye